Welcome to day seven of the Look at the Self yoga series. And today we are going to look at the head and the face and pay particular attention to the bones of the face. And we shall also practice a couple of nutritious positions for bringing a new flow of blood and energy into this very toppermost region of the body. The head sits at the top of your being and it houses that important aspect of every human, the brain. The average adult head weighs between four and a half to five kilograms. So if you were to get a couple of uh, bags of sugar and hold them in one hand, you would get an idea of the weight of your head. Inside your head is the brain, which on average for an adult weighs around three pounds. It communicates with the rest of your body as well. The head is such an important part for us to take care of. And uh, the better you know what's going on in this area, uh, the more able you will be to look after it. The face is the most anterior region of the head. And it is the unique aspect of every human being. Every single one of us has a unique face. It contributes to the displaying of our emotions. It helps facilitate our communications. It is with the face that we see smell and feed. It can be dissected into three parts, upper, middle and lower. The upper part of the face is where our forehead and our eyes are positioned. The middle part, our nose, our cheeks, our ears, and the lower part, our mouth, our jawline, our chin. The bones of the face and the head are uh, the frontal here, which is uh, around the area of the crown coming forward to the forehead. The parietal is just behind that actually around the crown. You have the sphenoid bones at the sides here, they're, they're a bit more frontal than the temporal bones that sit just next to the sphenoid. You have the occipital bone of the skull which is right here at the back lower part of the head. You have the ethmoid, which is here, sides of the nose. The lacrimal bones, which form part of the eye socket. The nasal bones. The zygomatic, here in the cheeks. The maxillary, across the upper lip. The mandible which is the jaw, the chin, and then you have a little floating bone known as the hyoid here in the neck, actually floats just above the entrance to the trachea. So there we have it, all the bones of the head and face and the understanding of the face being your unique uh, aspect um, to each and every one of us individuals. 
So because our head is the uppermost part of the body, it very rarely gets inverted, whereby it goes beneath uh, the position of the heart. Now by doing inversions with the head and the face, you actually allow yourself to get a new exchange of blood. And if you're breathing correctly and fully whilst in an inverted position, you're actually pumping extra volume of oxygen into that region, here being the head region. So as we know already, oxygen is what feeds us, regenerates us, recuperates, brings good health. So inversions are an important uh, part of your possible daily practice of yoga to keep that um, great flow of uh, oxygen reaching all the um, areas that wouldn't otherwise get such a good um, flow. Because where the head is above the heart, the heart has to work hard to pump the oxygen up into this area. As such, we learn when it has to pump all the way down to the feet and the exchange of uh, the blood flow and the oxygen here has a long journey to get back to the heart. So that's why the practice of yoga can assist this, because you move into positions that allow greater ease of the flow of energy and uh, blood and oxygen. And this works too with the reverse aspect of expelling waste products uh, from the body and the mind. So we are going to look at simulating a headstand just to get us uh, used to the feeling of inverting ourselves. Um, the headstand is the king of all asanas. It's one of the most beneficial postures you can give to yourself. But we'll start uh, with just a simulated one today. And then we're also going to take ourselves to find some emptiness in the head. We very rarely empty our head. It's continually working, uh, the brain, um, the thoughts, the stimuli, the emotions, and it's good to be able to switch off and empty out. Uh, so we'll be looking at how we can do that as well. But on to head stand simulation now. So you might like to have a um, cushion, pillow, blanket in front of you, uh, just to give a little bit of extra um, support beneath that very bony frontal parietal part of the skull here. You're simply going to start um, on your knees and you're going to uh, have your hands shoulder width apart in front of you. And when you look at the mat or rug or ground now in front of you, uh, find yourself visualizing a triangle position. So you've got the two bases of the hands and then you will lead that into a triangle position. So you'll see the top of the triangle and that's where you're going to place your head. So take a nice deep breath in, pick the buttocks away from the heels of the feet and just place the forehead onto that uppermost part of your visualized triangle. You're then just gonna gently roll 
onto the crown of the head a little bit more. You can adjust your hands to place them where they feel like a nice comfortable triangle has been created by yourself. Scan the body for any pockets of tension you might be holding on to. Take a look into the feet. Are you tensing at the toes? Are you gripping the calf muscles? Just allow them to relax, but also focus on them being well positioned so that your body weight is being distributed equally and evenly. Avoid collapsing your stomach muscles because you want the stomach to continue supporting your spine in this position. Now you have the support of the hands at the moment, but let's now turn the hands so that you rest onto the fronts of the hands and you place the fingertips to run in the same direction as the toes. So now you really are taking some more weight into the head, but you don't want to crash down into the head. You are still using the chunk of your body and your uh, abdominal muscles, your core muscles, to keep yourself positioned and held in alignment. Keep the breath flowing. Soften the jawline, unclench the teeth. Tune in. This is a part inverted posture and you are now receiving a greater volume of flow of oxygen into the region of the head and the face. That oxygen will now be feeding and stimulating and regenerating um, the cells within the face and the head and the brain. And remember, you can come out of the position as soon as you feel ready. If you have any ringing in the ears, then just ease out of the posture. You might like to come back and bring the support of the hands so that they can take some of the weight of the upper body. But this position, if comfortable, can be held for a good few minutes. It's a great preparatory uh, position in the learning stages of headstand. And then when you are ready to come out, bring the support of the hands back in line with the shoulders and very slowly roll off of the top of the head, bring the buttocks to the heels of the feet and just rest on the forehead. You might like to just rock the head from side to side. You will then bring your chin onto your chest and slowly, whilst pulling in the abdominal muscles, you'll restack the bones of the spine. Once the shoulders are over the hips, you can then bring the chin to uh, run parallel with the thighs. You will always come out of the position nice and slowly. So when you're ready, you can come back to a neutral, central, seated position. Now you come out of the posture slowly so that you can then allow the new levels of oxygen especially within the brain, to settle. If you come out too quickly, uh, you may 
have a slight feeling of dizziness or lightheadedness. And whilst this is usual, you want to avoid having this exit from the position too quickly because it's better to come out with control and allow those levels to settle. You might like to now close the eyes and tune in. Become aware of how you feel both internally and externally. You might have new feelings of spaciousness in the head. It might feel warmer than usual. Just scan your body, your mind, and experience how you feel. You are taking a true look at the self. The brain, the mind. So much potential, so much potential to create and destroy, to be good or bad, to be free or imprisoned, to be light or dark. So many polarities. But today we want to look at being nothing, switching off, becoming empty. In the emptiness, one can find peace. One can find space to renew to regenerate, to revitalize the self. In just seven days, we've learned a lot about the self, having taken a look at it. So now let's switch off. And we'll do this by taking ourselves into a supine position on the floor, laying flat on our backs with our legs extended out, nice and straight. So take yourself down onto the rug, the mat, the floor, however feels best for you. Make a nice connection of the spine with the ground and then extend the legs away. Have the feet about hip width apart and allow the toes to drop away from each other, the heels to point towards each other. Have your arms roll away from the outer edges of the legs. The backs of the hands resting into the floor, the knuckles connecting with the ground, the mat or the rug. And allow your fingers to soften and release. Let there be space between the fingers. They will curl naturally. You can feel the air moving within the palms of the hands. You can feel the temperature of the air touching onto the flesh, soft parts of the palms of the hands.
gently draw your chin towards your chest so that you lengthen the upper neck and come to rest centrally on the back of the skull. Now the mind is possibly still having many thoughts, all entering, all trying to get in at one time. You may be hurrying to try and stop these thoughts, push them away, get rid of. You might be consciously trying to focus and concentrate on what I am saying. There may be many things happening in the head, the brain, the mind, all at once. The main thing now to focus on is the air that is directly in front of your face. You can feel its temperature touching on the skin on your face. And using your powers of visualization, you can picture this air, the favorite color. And now this favorite color of yours is drawing into your nostrils. Your left nostril, your right nostril. These two chambers that contain millions of villi. Tiny hairs that swish backwards and forwards as you breathe in and these billions of tiny hairs will capture any particles of dust that might be entering the nostrils and the brightness of your favorite color progresses through the nostrils and you become this color, you morph into the air that's in your nostrils and you journey with it. It's traveling down the back of the mouth now. It's going down past that floating hyoid bone which is positioned just above the entrance to the trachea. And this favorite color of yours that you have now become moves deeper, further down, and you travel with it. You are now traveling with your breath. You become your breath. And as you become your breath, you observe how everything slows down. You're moving to your chest slowly, rising up. chest and as you leave your chest you notice behind you how it lowers and you move into your chest once again and experience the color of you 
lifting and elevating the chest. You have this sensation of rising up, swelling, and then you have this experience of receding, emptying. And being your favorite color, you can travel to all parts of your body, discovering new elements of who you are, having broken free from being trapped in the head. You're now adventuring through your body. This wonderful, colorful breath that you are. Knowing that an important role you now carry is to transport oxygen, this vital key element to life itself. You are transporting this vital life all around your body. You're in your toes. tingling sensation as you reach the peripheries and you're conscious of taking your time. You are fully aware there is no need to rush. because you are on a journey of discovery, of adventure. There is color, your favorite color. You have become this color. You may be changing color. Your sensory self experiencing this. You will notice This has occurred through every recessive breath which you have let go of. Fully, completely, consciously. in general.
you push everything from your feet up through the ankles and the shins and the calf muscles. Keep pushing everything up through the knees and the thighs and the hamstrings. Push everything up through the hips and the pelvic girdle. And the torso, pushing everything up. Pushing everything up from the fingertips, through the palms of the hands, up through the wrists, the forearms, the elbows. Pushing everything up, the upper arms and the shoulders. The upper chest, the neck, the throat the head, the mind, the brain, and everything empties out when you expel your next breath. It's a long and deep expiration. It's a full surrender. of your body and mind, gently rise upwards, you flip yourself over, come face to face with yourself, you look at yourself, and as you once again Exhale, you feel yourself rise a little higher. You're so light now. Weightless. With every breath that leaves your body, it takes you higher to the corner of the room. You see yourself resting peacefully on the floor. A look of serenity over the face, that unique entity that is you. As you rise higher, Releasing. Now on your rooftop. Looking out over the landscape around you. You can see the street in which you live. People going around and about their daily business. To the atmosphere, journeying, you feel the cool air touching on your skin, cleansing you as it washes over you. Moving on out of the city now. Run out into the countryside, across the fields, and the trees, and the streams beneath you. You're just gently floating along.
free. No worries, no fears, nothing to do except relax and find peace with yourself. into the corner of the room and you see your body resting peacefully on the floor and you bring yourself to position just above the self looking once again at that unique face of yours and then you draw inside the body and a breath in, feel the expansion of your chest, your torso, your tummy. And then consciously and fully release that breath. And the senses of the body come back to you, the sense of touch, you're aware of the material of the clothes against the skin of your body. You might like to brush the thumbs across the fingertips or wiggle your toes. Your sense of taste, you lick the lips and swallow. Your sense of smell, you become aware of any smells arising from or around you. Your sense of sound, uh, you listen to any noises in the room, outside of the room. And the sense of sight, you open the eyes, become aware once again of your surroundings. And when you're ready, you gently Roll on to your sides in a curled up position. Give yourself a couple of moments here. Retaining empty thoughts, nothing more than release, stillness and peace. The only other possible experience now is that of new vitality where you have emptied, now you can feel. When you're ready, bring yourself into that neutral position. Draw the hands together at your heart, the place of all truth. Truth is the easiest aspect of living. 
or more so it brings about the easiest aspect of living it's not necessarily the easiest journey but once you find your truth your true self the experience of living becomes easier so in seven days we've looked at the self and then tomorrow we can come back put it all together and we'll do a full session a very conscious and aware yoga that is going to develop strength suppleness flexibility grace and a peaceful happiness so we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>